Are you using JWTs in your application? And are you sure you're using them safely? Well, in this video, you will know for sure because we're going to share the top three best practices for handling JSON web tokens or JWTs, specifically when using them for web app authentication purposes. Number one, you wanna keep them safe, duh. Well, what does that entail though? For one, that means when you're transmitting a JWT over the wire, over the network, you wanna use a secure connection. So things like using the HTTPS protocol is crucial to ensure that so it can't be read by a malicious actor over the wire. Depending on how you're storing your JWT, which could be in a cookie for instance, or browser storage, such as local or session storage, then you wanna consider the security of using either of these options. If you use cookies, then you want to add some security flags on top of that cookie, like the secure flag or HTTP only flag. Secure flag is about making sure the cookie is only transmitted over HTTPS, like we just talked about, and the HTTP only flag is about disallowing access to that cookie and the value of it from JavaScript. That way it makes it harder for attackers to get access to the value of the JWT. Why don't you want attackers to be able to read your JWT? Well, because of two reasons. Often JWTs aren't encrypted and therefore the data stored within their value can be read as plain text by attackers. If you're storing sensitive information inside of the JWT and its value isn't encrypted, then that information will be read and used by an attacker. Another way you might store JWTs is through browser storage. Scenarios where you might use this is when you don't have a server-side backend that can handle creating and managing cookies for you. If you're using something like browser storage instead of cookies, you wanna lean more towards the session storage because that will limit the time that the token is available and stored to just the user's session duration. That means when the user either closes the browser tab or closes the browser completely, then the stored data in session storage is deleted. Something to note when using browser storage too, is that if your application is, is susceptible to things like cross-site scripting, then an attacker will be able to gain access to anything that's stored in this browser storage. So like your JWT, which is not good. You wanna avoid that as much as possible. Best practice number two, you wanna ensure the validity of the JWT. What that means is you don't trust any token that just walks into the door. You want to validate the signature of it, for instance, like a security guard would do when they're checking IDs to get into a building or some type of event or something like that. So here's how to do it right. Well, one, you need to start parsing the JWT, things like the header, the payload, the signature of it, and that'll ensure that those aspects of the JWT are up to par with your expectations. An example of this, verifying the signature of the JWT, using things like a public or private key that's part of the mechanism to create that JWT in the first place. You could check and see if it's been tampered with if it doesn't match up with your expectations there using those keys. You wanna use a strong algorithm for signing your JWTs. One of the common ways to sign them is with HMAC and SHA-256. In this scenario, a shared key is used to validate the token. However, in scenarios where you don't want to share a key, an asymmetric algorithm such as ECDSA can be used to sign the token with a private key and then validated later on with a public key that's available for anyone. JWTs have seven registered claims built into the standard, which are all important and serve a specific purpose. They should all be validated as well, but let's dive into a few of them. Things like the expiration or EXP or the not before claim, NBF claim. These will ensure the token is still active and safe to use in the current session that you're working with. Then from there, you have the issuer claim, which is ISS, by the way, and that's used to determine if the token came from a trusted party. And then you have the audience claim, which is AUD, and that's used to see the expected recipient of that token. As a reminder, these are just a few of the registered claims, and you can learn more about all of them at the website jwt.io. In addition to these seven registered claims, you can create your own custom claims if you'd like. Just be sure to use them properly by validating their values and making sure those are up to your expectations. So let's take a look at an example of decoding and validating a JWT in Python. So in this case, we're using the library PyJWT and we import that. And then let's say this token is coming in as part of a request. Verify the expiration, verify the issuer and verify the audience, to name a few. Then if any issues are found while decoding that JWT, it will raise an exception and we'll capture those using these exception clauses. And that's an example of verifying a JWT in Python. Moving on to best practice number three, use reasonable expirations. You wanna set a reasonable expiration on your JWT using the expiration claim that we mentioned earlier, or EXP. This is a Unix timestamp that indicates when the token expires. It allows the server to validate whether that token is still valid or not given the current time. Find a value for this expiration that balances the user experience with security, okay? But it depends on the use case within your application. If you're building, say, a social networking site, 
then an expiration set for a month from now might be more appropriate in that scenario. If you're building something more security sensitive, like a website for a bank, then an expiration set for 30 minutes from now would be more appropriate in that scenario. Again, balancing the user experience so it's not annoying them when you get a new JWT too often. Here's an example of setting up the expiration on a JWT within Python using that Py JWT library again and the date time library. So here we set up a date time that's 30 minutes from the current date time. And we set that using the exp claim right here with that value. And we just use the encode function in this case to tell it encode this particular JWT with these values and this expiration. Also that algorithm right there. All right. I know we said only three best practices, but I'm going to throw in an extra bonus tip here. And that is to automate some of this. And you can do that with sneak. Sneak will scan your code, open source dependencies, containers, and more to help find and fix security issues in your project, including security issues with your JWTs. Sneak code is something else from Sneak as well that can review the code you write for any risks and ensure you're not introducing vulnerabilities unintentionally. For instance, take this example Python code that sets up the use of JWTs using the Flask JWT library. Sneak code can then detect if we're using something like a weak encryption algorithm or not properly validating JWTs on the server. All right, to wrap things up, these best practices are crucial for safeguarding your applications and their use of JWTs. So make sure you keep your JWTs safe, you validate them, you use reasonable expiration dates, and you automate some of this with Sneak. If you want to learn more about this topic, you can read about it on our blog. Link is in the description below. If you got some value out of this video, be sure to like it and share it with a friend that can get some use out of it as well. And if you made it this far and you want more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding, everybody.